right. Hi, folks. So today we are with Bilal. Thanks for being with us, Bilal, again. I think it's your second time. Absolutely. And we'll be talking about uh, DLT, even if you have a nice DBT shirt, which is super confusing. <laughs> <laughs> They're both three letter words. So, you know, why, why is it confusing? All right. So I know, I know uh, you've been working at Databricks on a lot of the data engineering parts, a uh, bunch of workflows, and now focusing on all the DLT integration. Uh, and also, I know we had like many, many new releases and new updates on DLT. So maybe we can start with that. Uh, what's going on with DLT? What's the latest? Like, what's the latest update? Yeah, I think before I think before I have a more, an important question. Like, we, we are calling them uh, Delta Life Tables, DLT, and pipelines. So what's the official name? Yeah. So uh, okay, I'll tell you the official name in a moment. But first, I'll I'll tell you what the product is. So that's actually the most important part. So uh, you know, we call them DLT. Uh, nice three letters, not, you know, Delta live tables, uh, just DLT. And uh, for those of your uh, viewers and listeners who don't know, uh, DLT is a declarative framework for doing ETL. Now, the declarative piece means that instead of worrying about orchestration, instead of worrying about infrastructure, you know, all those things, you really just tell it what to do, which is really the queries. These are the transformations you want to do in batch and streaming. And then the framework takes care of the rest. So in some sense, it is in fact a little similar to DBT, but it's built on Spark, uh, and uh, that's that's DLT. Now we have been really busy over the last year, and uh, there's sort of two reasons for that. One is, uh, you know, the business has grown a lot, so the product has grown a lot. It's got a lot of adoption, and also we've been busy uh, really polishing the product. And this has, for me, the last year with DLT has been the year of polish. And that's good news for customers because uh, often what we hear a lot from uh, our customers is, actually, this is a really, really good product, uh, but I want you to make it more stable. I want you to make it more cost effective. I want a better developer experience. I want better errors. I want better documentation. That's really what we've been doing. So uh, we've been building a more delightful product. Uh, and that's just, you know, uh, pretty exciting. So I'm happy to get into that with you. And, and Bila, I know one of the common questions is, hey, should I use DBT? Should I use DLT? What's the difference between them? Can you can you maybe uh, share your you know your point of view? Like, what, what yeah. should I be using? Yeah. So, so first of all, I'm a big fan of DBT. I've been using DBT for a long time. And uh, they're a wonderful. Uh, first of all, it's a great community. It's an open source community. Uh, we love that. So my answer is very simple. I think DBT is a great product. Uh, whether it's open source or DBT Cloud. Actually, if you haven't used DBT Cloud, you really should check it out. And if you're using it, you should keep using it because it works really well and it works extra well on Databricks. Uh, so in fact, DBT is growing fastest, I believe, on Databricks than anywhere else. So it's a great product, whether it's the cloud version or the open source version. So keep using it. It's awesome. Um, now, in fact, a lot of people don't know this, but actually DLT and DBT work together. So uh, for the DBT users among you, you can use materialized views and streaming tables, which are two of the tables and views that are produced by DLT as incrementalization strategies in DBT. Um, so that's super awesome because you get the benefits of uh, DLT, the incremental ETL inside your DBT projects. Uh, now, if you're starting off on DLT on D Databricks and you don't know what you know what to use, we would love for you to try DLT. We think it's awesome. I think it's uh, native to Databricks. Um, one of the superpowers of DLT is it's the way it deals with streaming. And that's something D DBT actually doesn't do, right? So DBT is sort of agnostic to the execution mode. It really was built for batch. If you have anything that resembles streaming, uh, whether that's incremental ingestion or incremental ETL, DLT is a great choice. Um, so it's really, we, we support both uh, and both work super well on the platform. The, Bilal, you mentioned that Databricks spent a lot of time like polishing the, uh, the DLT. So can you tell us maybe one of the top features that has been maybe announced or deployed during the last couple months? Yeah. Uh, so actually what's, what's really interesting, my favorite uh, feature is actually better errors. And that might sound strange because, you know, hey, you don't think errors when you think features, but actually every developer, including me, the thing that we spend time most on is actually not developing our pipelines, it's actually debugging them. It's actually super common. So my favorite feature is actually better errors. And uh, the way we did that was we actually are going error category by error, error category, and we're assigning codes to them, we're assigning human readable messages, we're integrating with the assistant. So when the error happens, you'll be able to diagnose the error. So that's, that's not a sort of a traditional feature, but I think it's really important for the inner loop of the developer. Um, I would say the second closest, if I had to choose, would be that we've spent a lot of time on, um, you know, when you run a DLT, 
we actually do this super cool end-to-end -end analysis of the graph. So the, 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 directive, the directed acyclic graph with all the data sets and how data flows between them. We do type checking, many more things. And what's really cool is that that thing is really valuable, but it was slow. So we've made it like 90% faster in the last like three months. And we're on this mission to just make it as fast as possible. And what it means for developers, like I'm an engineer and the way I think is, hey, you're saving me time. I'm sitting in front of my computer. I'm developing this DLT. It used to take 30 seconds. Now it's just, you know, going to take a couple of seconds. That's pretty awesome. So that's the kind of stuff that, you know, uh, costs wall clock time. But to me, those are pretty awesome features. Yeah, yeah. and I think uh, like being able to check all the SQL uh, of the Python syntax and make sure everything is working and making sure it's super fast, like it's so nice because you would be changing something, just hit enter, it's going to recompile everything, you know you're safe and you, go, you can go to the next one. Where I know it used to be a little bit slow, uh, but now it's making everything like way, like way more interactive in the way you debug stuff. So that plus the error, that's really cool. And I think also maybe I think you missed I, I mean, for me, my top my top feature was uh, the, the the what we call direct publish mode, like the possibility to write to multiple yeah, catalogs and schemas. Yeah, yeah, this is this is actually uh, super interesting. So uh, we're actually we're calling it. Um, I don't even that was just an internal code name. So here, here's the thing. So uh, now your DLT, a single DLT, can write to multiple catalogs and schemas. It sounds like a really small thing, but this was sort of surgery in the Spark code. Uh, which is pretty awesome. This is another one of those, you know, uh, from a from a feature perspective, it's it's you just use it, you just write to different catalogs and schemas. But the implementation was very complex and kind of a long road. That's also going generally available pretty soon. So that's pretty exciting. And I think one of the main questions that people were asking, like, okay, when I'm using a Delta a DLT, it creates behind scene what we call streaming tables. So those are like tables that are append only. Mm -hmm. Delta enhanced to handle streaming part, which means any, for example, a SQL and like a data analyst can use um, streaming tables to do streaming. And then we have uh, materialized views. So like uh, they are do like uh, they are better handled to better designed to handle CDC or like incremental changes. But those type of tables can only be, let's say, used uh, inside Databricks. So how can I expose those kind of tables outside Databricks? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really good one. It's actually... Uh, something that we hear a lot. So as the product got used more and more, um, so uh, we're fixed. We're fixing it actually. Uh, so we have a capability called compatibility mode. It's in private preview right now, and that lets any external reader, anybody who can read a Delta table, actually read these uh, materialized views and streaming tables. And uh, this is in preview. You should contact your account team if you want it. We're working hard on getting this out the door, becoming generally available. And uh, the roadmap for this capability is pretty ambitious because uh, we, we currently don't support deletion vectors, but we are working on that support. So uh, anyway, lots of work happening here. And with that, you know, you build your DLT in Databricks, and then just add a couple of table properties, and then you know, voila, it's like ready to go, and you can read this from anywhere. Uh, it's pretty pretty cool. And, and I think one of the thing I heard also like as kind of a complaint on the product was that if you publish things on DLT, you would have issues to you know, apply things like role level security and things like that. Is it, is it like, is it now fully working? What's the latest on that? Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a really good one. Um, so yeah, so uh, for all intents and purposes, streaming tables and materialized views are just like regular tables and views in Databricks now. So you can apply yeah, role, level, uh, role level security, column masking, you can do liquid clustering, you can get a change data feed out of streaming tables. Soon you'll be able to get a change data feed out of materialized views. That's on our roadmap as well. So yeah, so we've we we've been on this mission to make them fully look and feel just like tables and views. So that's already available now. Uh, so you can do liquid clustering now on your uh, streaming tables if you wanted to in MVs. I think I haven't tried yet this feature. I I have to do it. <laughs> And and what about the cost? Because I've seen uh, if I'm new to Databricks and I go and try to uh, to create a DLT pipeline, I see that the um, the the DBUs are a little bit higher. Is it because they are doing some optimizations on your behalf to make sure that the cost remain remain like uh, low? Like what? Yeah. So so there are a couple of things that are happening, and I think um, you know so DLT does automatic incremental ETL. So what that means is that. Uh, we only we do our best effort to only process the new data. Now, if your data set is really really small, you can just sort of recompute everything historically. It doesn't matter, right? If you have you know let's say a, you know gigabyte of data, it doesn't really matter. You could just throw it all away, recompute it. 
But for a large table, this can become extremely expensive. So DLT has this engine, which is super cool. It's called Enzyme. Enzyme actually analyzes the query planned and it actually figures out, now it actually figures out like what data has changed and how to do the ETL incrementally. Now it doesn't work for every single workload, every single query, but we've spent a lot of time increasing the coverage of Enzyme. So we're super proud of that. Um, now still, well, we want to give our customers the most price performant offering. So we are doing a bunch of things to make the total cost of ownership of DLT go down and just be more affordable. Uh, we want every customer to use it. Uh, we're doing a few things here. Uh, I'll give you sort of a super high level. Uh, on the high level, in the next month, you should expect the total cost of ownership of a DLT to go down. Uh, you should use serverless. All of these enhancements are coming out only in our serverless offering. Uh, that's how they're implemented in the serverless fleet. Um, so all the en all the enzyme engine enhancements are there. Uh, the way we bill for the actual um, photon as well in DLT is in serverless. We're and releasing enhancements there. And uh, we will also be releasing a new serverless mode, which will let you trade off uh, log latency for compute with uh, lower cost. That's all coming. So think of this as a package of capabilities that are all aimed at reducing your cost. And this is all happening in the next you know, few weeks. So uh, it's pretty good news for our customers. And again, you can also try to, try to monitor the cost using system tables and the different dashboards you do have there. So you have nothing yes. to worry about. This and, is... and there's a new pipelines system table. So that's actually pretty cool. I believe that's in preview. Uh, and that wasn't there before. So it was kind of really difficult to figure out the cost. Uh, this is there's a whole bunch of other metadata in there as well. Yeah, it was part actually of our the last discussion we had together oh, in Slack, and um, I think I have uh, another question. Like, uh, like Databricks announced Lakeflow Connect and or like Lakeflow uh, Lakeflow product, and it, it's built on the top of uh, DLT. So can you? Give us maybe more insight about the Lakeflow or the three components first. Absolutely, yeah. So, so Lakeflow is uh, the uh, unified, streamlined, and performant uh, data engineering uh, product from Databricks. Uh, it has three components. The first component is Lakeflow Connect, and Lakeflow Connect is no-code, point-and-click ingestion from enterprise applications like Salesforce, Workday, NetSuite. So both the structured data sources as well as unstructured data sources like SharePoint and uh, such such things. So the whole promise of Lakeflow Connect is you you know point and click at the source and let us take care of ingestion. Um, and that's by the way that includes databases like SQL Server and more to follow. Um, now once you have that data in Databricks, the very next thing you want to do is to transform it. You know filter, clean, aggregate it, and that is actually uh, DLT. That's the second piece of it, right? That's the second, the declarative ETL. And finally, to get this all into production, uh, you have to orchestrate this. You have to run this on a schedule. Maybe you have to run this on a trigger. If you want to combine this with other, let's say, non-ETL things like, you know, you have an, an analytics notebook or a query. Maybe you want to train a model. That's actually Lakeflow Jobs. And Lakeflow Jobs is going to uh, ensure that everything is up and running. It's scheduled. Um, yeah. Oh, and then, sorry, your question was, hey, why why does Connect build on top of DLT? It took me a second to remember your question. Yeah, so actually, it's a really, really uh, simple answer. Because ingestion, data ingestion, is almost always incremental. Uh, you almost never want to... It's only in cases where there is an operational failure that you may want to reload historical data. Uh, so when your ingestion is incremental, that's exactly what streaming tables are. Streaming tables are designed for incremental inserts and appends. Uh, sorry, appends into uh, a delta table. And then because we using we actually use streaming tables uh, under the hood for Lakeflow Connect, you can actually do incremental ETL off of them. So the increment, the ETL, when you, when, let's say, you know, you have a, let's say you have a Salesforce orders table that is arriving incrementally. The, the, you can then have a streaming table, a materialized view in a DLT that incrementally processes only the change data. Um, this for many workloads, removes the need for manual incrementalization, which can be very costly to, and difficult to reason about and actually costly if you get it wrong. So that's why we decided to build on top of streaming tables and materialized views because they're the, the right primitives for ETL. And um, I, I'm going to bring you back again to DLT, but can we use the uh, DLT for um, low, for like... Um for streaming use cases with the low latency. Yes. Oh yeah, that's that's a really good one. Um, so 
DLT will soon support a number of ex expanded semantics for streaming. Um, so specifically, we're going to support something called for each batch. So if you've done structured streaming, that's going to be supported. Now, if you want to go really fast, if you want to go you know, down to, let's say, 50 milliseconds of latency or 100 milliseconds of latency, you have to stay in structured streaming because in structured streaming, we're adding something called real-time mode. And that real-time mode uh, is going to support you know, uh, the predictable low latency. Um, this is all part of the Lakeflow umbrella, so you actually get a lot of the benefits of Lakeflow. Um, bringing that mode to DLT will take us a little bit longer. That is something we want to do. Um, yeah. I think you covered all the questions I had on top of my mind. What about you, Q? Uh, may maybe you had last one on the like on the input and outputs. Uh, yeah. I, I know I know folks want to, are curious to know about you know in, um, sync and flow. Yes. Um, so maybe can you share a bit on that and how it's working and what's new there? Yeah. Uh, so um, let's see. Uh, so the general idea here from a you know, from very simply. Uh, we're just expanding the ability of uh, DLT to uh, write data to multiple different places. So previously, DLT could only write to you know streaming tables. A very common request we get is, hey, I'm reading from Kafka, and I want to write to Kafka. Can I do that? Uh, or a common one, another one is, hey, I'm reading from you know uh, Kafka, and I want to write this to a Delta table. Like, can I do that? And you couldn't do it. So uh, we've added these uh, these. Uh, new types of um, this API called managed syncs. And with those, LT is now capable to write to not just streaming tables, it can write to Delta tables, it can write to Kafka. So if you have a, that's actually a really common use case. So that's pretty exciting to, for that to be supported in DLT. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bilal. Thank Pleasure. you for, and uh, looking forward to having you for the uh, maybe third time after the Data and AI Summit. My pleasure. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.